Shalom, Hebrews and Shebrews. Welcome to the channel. I am Oilfield Disciple. If you have stumbled on this channel by accident and you haven't subscribed yet, please go click the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you will get notified with uh, daily videos I make um, on the scripture uh, of the Most High. Uh, for those that follow me, thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for following. Uh, I'm up here in the up north today and it's it's a little more winter wonderland i got 12 degrees on my temperature for my truck and the snow is still flurrying so blessed be yahweh today we're going to read romans chapter 12 first um i've got a lot to interject here um, we may or may not finish first kings um chapter one remember last time we we were together reading um i actually cut it off um, about halfway point in, in 1 Kings chapter 1. <clears throat> and I'm sorry I still haven't got that other video that I did a, an in-depth teaching on uh, 1 Kings 1, but I, I will get it up there. It's just, it's been a hard couple of days with this storm and out here there's been a lot going wrong. I've been doing 12, 13, 14 hour days and so I just haven't had time uh, to do so. So please forgive me on that. Get your Bibles out. Turn to Romans chapter or chapter twelve. My favorite place to read is right here at this old farmhouse. As you can tell from past videos, you can stare at the the windmill. Thank goodness it's not spinning round and round today. Too bad, um, or it would be miserable out here. All right, Romans chapter twelve. Now Romans eleven, Paul interjects and tells us how we are to incorporate from Gentile to Israel and how Yahweh and Yeshua had made that legally possible for us to do so. It was a legal adoption, a legal adoption for Israel or for Gentiles to become into the house of Israel. Now, Paul in, in chapter 12 of Romans, Paul's going to go further and explain what that looks like. And we're going to, we're going to dig into that a little bit because this is highly important. This is where most people miss uh, the truth of Yahweh today in, in the instituted religious system. And this is where they miss it and have their replacement theology. And so let's look at this real, real good. Verse 1 says, I call upon you, therefore, brothers, through the compassion of Elohim, to present your bodies a living sacrifice or a living offering. Set apart, well-pleasing to Elohim, is your reasonable worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you prove what is that good and well-pleasing, perfect desire for Elohim. Stop. <clears throat> Those three verses right there are key. All right? It's key to discipleship. It's key to um, conversion from the world to becoming the people of God. Paul's talking to a people that is converting and coming to the truth and knowledge of, of Yeshua, Jesus, what he done. And so he's talking to them. He's saying, look, I call upon you brothers through compassion with all my heart to present yourself a living sacrifice to Yahweh. Forsake all and follow me is what Jesus said. Now, when he told the rich young ruler, go sell all you have and give to the poor, what he means by that is not go sell every individual item you have and give it all to the poor. Put your heart in a place where you are, are your only desire is for Elohim. And if you see one in stumbling, if you see one of the people of Israel, of, of Yahweh, in trouble do something about it you have the means to do it do it i believe it's in james james says when someone comes to you with an issue and you send them away with only prayer when you had the means to give them what they asked for meaning your brother just lost his only vehicle to get to work you've got four sitting in the in the driveway and you only use one Loan your brother that vehicle rather than setting. You pray for him absolutely with 
with all your heart, but you have the means to right now help him. So you do so. You loan him one of your vehicles until something comes up for this man. Now, you've got to be, be discerning, discerning in this or people will take advantage of you. And there's a difference in a handout and a hand up. I'm all for giving hand ups, not handouts. Don't depend on me for your welfare for the rest of your life. And I've had that issue here within the last year with COVID. Anyway, <clears throat> so present yourselves as a living sacrifice. You forsaken all. Nothing means more than serving God. Now, he says, be set apart, well-pleasing. This is your re reasonable service or reasonable worship. What Jesus did on that cross to redeem you from your wicked self should be enough to, to, to motivate you to get off your butt, pick up your Bible, and begin gathering with like-minded believers. That's your reasonable worship. I mean, that's, that's bare minimum basics. Not, well, me and God got our own thing going on over here. That's not scripture. Do not forsake the assembling together as some do. Well, I don't want to go to that church. They just bunch of hypocrites down there. You're at the bar with a whole, whole building full of hypocrites. But that don't bother you because you want to be there. You feel me? All right. <clears throat> do not be conformed to this world, verse 2, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? You can fill your mind with garbage or you can fill your mind with, with Elohim, with Yahweh. And that is this word that we are reading. You can feel it. You replace your old thoughts for Yahweh's thoughts because your old th thoughts, Jesus says, out of the mouth, the heart speaks. So in Jeremiah 17, 9, he says, the heart is wicked and deceitful above all things. So out of your heart, the mouth speaks, right? If you do not replace your thoughts for God's thoughts by reading this word everything is evil there's good and there's God you feel me if a man walks around by day helping old ladies across the street carrying groceries to them so they don't have to get out does all this but by night is a serial killer how says you is he good or is he wicked Okay, that's an extreme example. But according to God, according to Yahweh, without Jesus, we are all deviant, wicked, evil. So the only way to come out of that, and I know because I was, I was a drug addict, I was an alcoholic, um, I didn't care if I cheated on my wife. I love my wife, but I can um, convince myself that it would be okay as long as she didn't know. That's wicked, right? So Jesus brought me from that to who I am today. That I no longer am a drug addict. I'm no longer an alcoholic. I'm no longer a womanizer. I'm no longer a liar, a thief, a murderer. I talk bad about dude all day long because he sucked at work. That's murdering your brother. Your words. All right. So um, 2 Corinthians 10 let me look there real quick. Amazing, I turned right to it. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, um, actually back up to verse 4. For the weapons we fight with are not fleshly, but mighty in Elohim. For overthrowing strongholds, overthrowing imaginations in every high matter that exalts itself against the knowledge of Elohim taking captive that we take captive every thought and make it obedient to yeshua messiah and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete that's not someone else's disobedience that's your disobedience it's what we talked about in that video the other day that when you read something in scripture and you don't like it you don't justify your means and twist the scripture to justify your means you change your lifestyle your complete lifestyle to fit that regardless of whether you like it or not 
You feel me? All right. <clears throat> so that's casting down imaginations. If I don't keep my mind on the Word and on God, I promise you, I'll get off track. I'll go south. I've seen me do it. So if I can do it, if I don't do it, I'm pretty sure that you are the same way. So he's saying, don't be like the world. Over in Deuteronomy, it says, or actually it's in Jeremiah, it says, when you go into the nations, when you go in to the, the areas where the Goyim, the Gentiles are, don't allow yourself to be taken captive by their traditions, by their, their wicked pagan ways. Don't do it. Lest you fall, lest you die. Here, Paul is telling a wicked pagan Gentile nation, look, you got to conform to Israel. It's like America. When you come to America, you should conform to American ways. You left where you was at for a reason, right? I mean, where you was at was poverty, dictatorship, hateful, wicked people to come to a land where, you, where you're, you're supposed to be free to do as you feel fit for you and yours. To, to accomplish um, peace and tranquility. That's, that's the American dream, right? I mean, it's false, but that's what we are shoving down people's throats. And so people flock here. You don't bring your culture and try to change America to your culture because your culture sucked. Same thing Paul's saying here to the Gentiles who are just coming to Messiah. Your lifestyle, your traditions, your ways suck. They're terrible, they're wicked and evil, and Yahweh will have no part of them. You're going to conform to Yahweh's traditions, commands, decrees. We're not going to change God's word to fit your narrative. That's what, Paul, that's what be not conformed to this world means. But transform your mind. Renew your mind and prove what is good and well-pleasing to Elohim. What is good and well-pleasing to Elohim? Hebrews 10, 6. You cannot please God without faith. It's impossible. So you have to have faith. We well, have faith in. Faith that Jesus did what he said he come to do. Faith that the prophets were truthful in, in ushering in the Messiah to come. Faith that God is almighty and that once a man is to die and then the judgment. What will the judgment be? You're going to be judged according to his standard. And Yeshua, you better have Yeshua to be there with you or everlasting life or, or everlasting hell. Either way. <clears throat> Either way, we're going to spend eternity somewhere. All right. If that's confusing to anybody, feel free to hit me up in the comments or um, email me at OFD2176 at gmail.com. I'll also have that in the comments. Verse 3. For I say through the favor which has been given me, everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought, but to think soberly as Elohim has given each a measure of faith. Okay, that's discipleship. That's what I was talking about yesterday in the baptism video. We don't force the law down your throat to convert you. We give you the love. We show you who God is. That is making a disciple. Then you'll figure out all the intricacies that's straining at a cam or straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel that Jesus talks about in Matthew 23, uh, 23, 23, and 24. Make a disciple out of them. All right, that verse three is discipleship. Verse one, bringing them into the kingdom, bringing them into the house of Israel. Verse two is telling us what that looks like, how we do it. All right, let's carry on. For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. So we, the many, are one body and Messiah, and members each one of one another. <clears throat> okay, Paul's saying, you're not going to, don't attain to be me. 
right? You, you look at someone who, you know, and this is what we, we, we make of the fatal mistake of. We look at the pastor up at the pulpit and go, man, I wish I was like him. He's got it all together. I promise you, I promise you, he has just as many, if not more, issues daily than you do. And he needs God. He needs Jesus every second. Just as much as you do, if not more. I promise you, as a pastor, I know this. Don't attain to be me. Don't attain to be your pastor. Don't attain to be this guy. Shoot for what Jesus did on the, what Jesus told us to do. For the example that Jesus was. That's what you shoot for. If I'm trying to jump over five foot one on a high jump, I don't shoot for five foot one. I shoot for six foot. Make sure I clear it. All right. If I shoot for five foot one, I'm probably going to hit at 411 and knock the bar down. Shooting for Jesus, yes, we will never attain that perfection until glory. But why not shoot for high? Because that's what we're commanded to do. Do as Jesus did. Follow Jesus. God says, we were all to be conformed to the Son. We were created to be conformed like the Son. The firstborn among many. Alright. <clears throat> that's what Paul's saying there. So we, the many, as one body and Messiah members, each one of one another. Now, having different gifts according to the favor which was given us, let us use them accordingly. Now, that use them accordingly in my Bible is italicized. So, therefore, the original language there didn't have those specific words that you can go look up. And so, whatever word there um, that is used in the Greek automatically showed that use them accordingly. Whatever gift you have, use them as you're given. If prophecy according to the pro proportion of faith all right prophecy we always think prophecy is all seeing the future knowing what's coming being a prophet being a prophecy is speaking the word of god being the mouthpiece for yahweh yes it also has other abilities as a prophet but to prophesy is just to to be the mouthpiece of yahweh that's what prophet prophecy means prophet means all right so verse 7 if serving then serve or he who is teaching teach all right serving that's important right there we all think you know it's kind of like when you join a football team or a baseball team you want to be the one with the that always has the ball you want to be the quarterback or you want to be the receiver you know what the quarterback can't do his job if the linemen don't do theirs and the quarterback can't do his job if the linemen ain't doing theirs and the receivers and the running back doing theirs. So the, the most minute on the team is actually the most integral part of the team. Serve. By serving, come and support your pastor. Come and support your brother. That's serving. He who encourages, encourage. Awesome. Lift people up when they're sad. I, I've known people that I mean, it's almost impossible to see them upset. Their truck can burn down and they're like, well, it's, it's okay. Now, they may be broken inside, but they don't ever let you see so. And they're always an encouragement to you. Cool. That's a gift. Use it. For the kingdom of God, not for the world. Told y'all this was going to be a long video. Verse 9. <clears throat> oh, let me finish up. He who encourages in encouragement, or he who is sharing in sincerity. He who is leading in diligence. He who shows compassion, compassion joyously. Going back to the rich young ruler. If you have the means to loan your, your brother a vehicle when it is broke down, do so. Don't just simply pray that something happens for him. You have the ability. Go do it. Verse 9, let love be without hypocrisy. Shrink from what is wicked and cling to what is good. As you begin following the Most High and learning His Word, the ways you used to be will become 
wicked to you. They will actually become evil and you will be, you will despise them. Like, like me and my wife, when we, we decided, all right, we're doing what it says in Leviticus 11. We're not going to eat pork chops no more, even though it's $1.18 a pound versus hamburger at $5 a pound. We're going to stick to this and we're going to do what God said because he placed it upon our heart. That was one aspect of our transition after a whole bunch of transitions we'd already went through. But this is a big one for us in the fact that I loved bacon. I put bacon on everything. That was hard for me to give up. That's being a living sacrifice. Now, I can't stand the smell of bacon. Truly. I mean it. I mean, it's like, ugh, what is that? That is disgusting. God has changed my heart. He's changed my mind. Okay. And in that, but back to verse three, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Just because Yahweh has, has conformed my heart to that one law to walk in it, I am not to condemn my brother over here who's still clinging to the, the establishment, the established religion that says, you don't have to do that no more. All I can do is in brotherly love, teach upon it and allow the spirit to do it. That's it, you know? There comes a time, 1 John uh, 5, 16, I'm praying for a brother. There comes a time when it's time to cut it off, when they're just not going to do it. And it's time to cut that relationship. But Yahweh will show you when that time is. Don't just automatically, well, I, I'm doing the Levitical 11 law. They need to be doing it or they're, they're wicked heathens. Okay? You were too. Remember that. Remember where you came from. That's verse 3. I hope this is making sense to y'all. In brotherly love, tenderly loving towards one another in appreciation, giving preference to each other. Giving preference to each other, just what I said. All right? He hadn't went through the process. I still smoke cigarettes. Asking God every day, take this urge from me like you did the alcohol. It ain't happened yet. So for whatever reason... It is what it is. I quit stumbling over it. I quit fighting it. When it's time, it'll be time. Verse 11. <clears throat> Not idle in duty, ardent in spirit, serving the master, rejoicing in expectancy, enduring under pressure and continually steadfast in prayer. That's key. One time I, I, I went to one of my elders and and I asked him, one of the deacons and I said, uh, I've been praying on this issue and praying and praying and praying, but I ain't getting no answer. He goes, what are all you reading in the Bible? And I went, well, I haven't been reading my Bible. He goes, well, you need to read your Bible along with prayer. And it made so much sense. It would be like me asking the, as a child, asking my dad for something. And before he gave me the answer, I ran off. And then come back a couple hours later, ask him the same question and run off as soon as I asked it and never waited for his answer and then get frustrated because my dad didn't say yes or no. God doesn't hear me. God doesn't answer my prayers. Reading his word and prayer goes hand in hand. Prayer is speaking to the Father. Reading is hearing from the Father. You want to hear his voice? Read the word out loud. I know it's a joke. <coughs> Funny cliche, but I like it. This is his word. It's his living word. Verse 12. Rejoicing in expectancy, enduring under pressure, and continuing steadfast in prayer. Continue. Not partially, but continue. You know, I see a lot of people, they come to Christ. They come to Messiah because they have this major issue in their life. Yeshua dresses that up for them. And they gone. They're back in the world doing their thing. They don't need Jesus no more. He fixed that one issue for them. And that's all they were looking for. Sadly, continue in Messiah. He's got better things for you. John 10, 10. The thief come to steal and destroy. But Jesus, Yeshua, come to give you life and life abundantly. That's not get the girl, get the house, the bank account, and the job. That's the promise of Jesus. 
That's what he's, that's life abundantly. Come to him. You don't, you don't marry your spouse and then run off and never see her again until you need something from her or him. It's not going to work. This is a relationship. And this is what Paul is explaining. Verse 13, imparting to the needs of the holy ones, pursuing kindness towards strangers. Sometimes just smile, you know. Um, maybe you're in line at a convenience store and all you got is one item and the line's long and the, and the lady up there that's at the cash register is just having trouble with everything and it's just not working right. Instead of barking at her when you go up there or talking amongst each other in line going, what an idiot, how stupid she is. She hears that and you're breaking her down. Maybe you should lift her up. That's, that's just being kind to strangers. All right. Verse 14, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Let God have it. Vengeance is his. Let God deal with them. It doesn't mean you allow them to run over you. You stand strong and bold in Messiah. But don't curse them. Pray for them. Hopefully, the Spirit will get a hold of them. That's your job. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be a brother. Be of the same mind toward one another and do not be proud in mind. But go along with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own eyes. All right? Hey, I figured all this out in Jesus. And I've been teaching you for a year and a half and you've only got part of what I got in three months. You're an idiot. Don't be like that. Have, have compassion on someone who's just not getting it as quick as you. Because I promise you, there's someone above you that got a whole lot more than what you got a whole lot quicker. Verse 17, pay no one evil for evil and respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible on your part, be at peace with men. If you can, be at peace with them. Somebody's pissed you off. Don't continue throwing slanders and don't continue just keeping the, the feud going. <clears throat> Verse 19, Beloved, do not revenge yourselves, but give place to the wrath. For it has been written, Vengeance is mine, I shall repay, says Yahweh. Deuteronomy 32, 35. Let him deal with it. Instead, if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire upon his head. And do not be overcome, overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, all right, that's key. Because when I first started reading the Bible and I read in Psalms, or uh, yeah, Psalms 25, you will heap coals upon his head. I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to pray for you and burn you to the ground. By heaping coals, you remember in Isaiah 6, when, when, they, when God brings him up to heaven, brings him before the throne, and Isaiah's like, whoa, I'm undone. I have unclean lips, and I'm a man of unclean I, I live among men with unclean lips. What does the angel do? He gets a coal of fire and cleanses his lips. Ah. So by heaping coal, mounds of coals on your, your enemy's head by praying for them and not repaying them for evil, Make sense? The ability that they may come to Messiah. Like I said, you are not commanded to be weak, mealy mouth pansies that get run over by mankind. <clears throat> but there's a way to be bold, standing your ground, yet in love, without destroying your enemy. God's been walking me through that, uh, that lesson for the last two, three years now. <clears throat> I'm getting there. I really am. Uh, I'm struggling with it at times, but we're getting there. I'm a whole lot better today than I used to be. The way I used to be before Messiah, if somebody said, hey, oh, so-and-so was one, looking for you to kick your butt, I went and found so-and-so, and we got it. We, we, we settled it right then. I didn't wait for them to come to me. Today, 
I don't care what you say. Okay, so everybody wants to beat me up. Cool. When they get here, we'll deal with it. But we'll deal with it with the way God wants me to deal with it. <clears throat> I won't be run over, but I'm not. Um, I'm not out for myself. I don't. I don't care about my uh, persona. I don't care about my rep in the manner of everybody calls me a heretic. Everybody says, "Oh, he's a works-based pastor that believes in this." And how stupid he is! I don't care. I'm spitting out the word of truth to the best of my broken ability and knowledge and the wisdom that the Holy Spirit's given me. And I won't compromise on that. If God showed me a truth through the Holy Spirit and His Word and me not one verse making a doctrine or private interpretation, but look, this is what it says in Scripture. And nowhere is it revoked by God because he's the same yesterday, today, yesterday, today, and forever. And he spoke all that he would do to his prophets. We have all the information we need to, con to come out of her, my people, and, and become Israel and conform to his ways and not the world's ways. Everything's there. Then I have to do something about that. I have to change my lifestyle. And so do you. Romans 12 is, is, a, is a great chapter. Um, there's a whole lot more I could do with it. I uh, may make another video as we cruise today. Um, as I, I got a lot of ground to travel. And so I may make another video kind of piggybacking off of this. And so look for it. Y'all be blessed. Be encouraged and always be frustrated. This is the Oilfield Disciple, a.k.a. Pastor Matt. I will catch you on the next reading.